Hello everyone and welcome and thanks for joining us at this reInvent online edition. As you probably know, distributed systems are composed of several individual subsystems, whether it's a CDN, a load balancer and databases, and of course their interaction. These interactions sometimes have unpredictable behavior that can be caused by unforeseen turbulent events like a network failure. And those may turn, those bending issues might turn into catastrophic failure sometimes. Such events can be minimized with chaos engineering, which is a discipline that helps gain confidence into the system's resilience to failures. I'm Adrian Hornsby, I'm Principal Developer Advocate for AWS, and in this talk, together with Baron J. Likar, Software Engineering at Amazon Prime Video, we will present an open source failure injection solution for Amazon EC2 and ECS, which leverages AWS System Manager, and we also discuss how Prime Video combines failure injection with load testing to achieve higher levels of resiliency. So as Werner Vogel, CTO of Amazon, famously said, failures are given and everything will fail over time. And this is true from routers to hard drive to operating systems and memory unit corrupting TCT, TCP packets from transient errors to permanent failures. This is a given, whether you are using the highest quality hardware or lowest cost component. So we need to build systems that embrace failure as a natural occurrence, even if we do not uh, know what this failure might be. Systems need to be kept running even when the house is on fire. We call that partial failure mode. It is important to be able to manage the species that are impacted without the need to take the overall system down. And this is true for any system, whether it's a large distributed system or a simple one. In fact, I would even argue that simple applications are complex. Take, for example, a simple client-server communication. There are a lot of steps for a single round trip. The client puts message into the network. The network delivers the message to the server. The server validates the message. The server might update its states and, if necessary, you know, based on the message, change some part of the states. The server then puts a reply onto the network. The network delivers the replies to the client. The client validates the reply and maybe the client updates its own state. So it's mind-boggling to consider all the different permutations of failure that this simple distributed system can encounter, right? Especially over multiple requests. So one way to approach distributed engineering is to distrust everything and, of course, test. But while testing is mandatory, it doesn't really apply well for distributed systems and often it doesn't really address the complexity of production environments. Furthermore, testing really verifies only known condition. What about all the random failures and what about the intermittent errors? How about configuration drift and what about unknowns? Some of the things can get really hard to test. For example, take a system where an instance starts and stops automatically. What happens if any of the instances in that particular group of instances run out of disk space? Now, that's a common issue when we forget to put log rotation on. And of course, we also forget to have alarms that tell us there is not enough uh, disk space left on the instance. Of course, it's often localized, but sometimes it can end up into a cascading failure and take the entire system down. So if your instance doesn't have enough left, uh, space left to, to write logs, what it does, it, it often fails fast. And that's a real issue because by doing that, it creates what we call a black hole. Because when it fails fast, it fools the load balancer into thinking that this instance is free to receiving new requests which in turn actually fail. So make no mistakes, right? These are really hard problem. Luckily, there's a practice that really help with this kind of unknown errors. And it is, as you probably have guessed by now, chaos engineering. So chaos engineering is the process of stressing an application in testing or production environment by creating disrupting, disruptive events. Uh, and then those disruptive events are, for example, a server outage or an API throttling. 
then we observe how the system responds and of course then we want to implement improvements. And we do that to prove or disprove our assumption that we do on the system. And we, these assumptions are in the form of an hypothesis. And an hypothesis is about the system capability to handle these disruptive events. Right? This is the, really the principle behind the scientific method. But rather to do those disruptive uh, events at 3 a.m. When, you know, when usually outages happen or during the weekend or you know, Christmases and things like this. Uh, and in Prod, we want to create those failure injection in a control environment, uh, and especially during working hours when everyone is in the room and fresh. So chaos engineering always starts with the why. Why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, what is the goal? Is it to improve availability? Is it to improve our security posture, to improve our resilience? So answering the why, the why will help you formalize your hypothesis, right? the famous what if. <laughs> so what if I inject latency into my dependency? What happens if I randomly stop a server? What happens if I stop my database? We then construct an experiment to prove or disprove this hypothesis. And running the experiment happens using failure injection. And we do that until we are happy with the results. So there are plenty benefits to practicing chaos engineering, and these are just few of my favorite ones. First, it really helps you and your team and your organization to build confidence against failure, right? Remember the first outage you had? Well, I really remember mine, and I can tell you that I was really not prepared. My heart rate went high, I started to sweat. I had really no idea what I was doing. And that's simply because I was not trained. You don't learn these kind of things at school. The only way you learn it is by doing it in production, unfortunately. Second, it also helps you validate your monitoring and observability practices and, of course, alarms. How many outages did you experience that could have been prevented? Would you have had the proper alarms in place? I know I had several. Third, by practicing often, chaos engineering helps you acquire, but also maintain the skills that helps you recover quickly when you real outage happen. Which leads me to the force. Who doesn't want to recover faster? <laughs> so that's just the tip of the iceberg, by the way. And, and I've seen companies transforming themselves, both technically and culturally in the past few years, thanks to embracing chaos engineering practices. Today, I really want to focus on fault injection, which is the part of chaos engineering that often uh, excites most people because it's a fun part. Fault injection comes really in many ways. Uh, we can have application level fault injection, which is more about throwing exceptions, errors. Well, how many outages have happened because we haven't caught the right errors uh, uh, or we haven't caught the correct uh, ex uh, exceptions. We can do host level failure injection, uh, like for example, kill a proper service or uh, restart a process. We can do resource exhaustion, so for example, burn a CPU, remove the memory or reduce the I.O., all these kind of things. And of course, we do network failure attacks. This is probably some of the most popular one where we inject latency in some of the dependencies. We simply drop packets or cut the communication. Right? We can do, of course, subnet failures, so deny routing policies on subnet level. So uh, this is very commonly used to do uh, availability zone kind of failures. And we can have service failures like you know, reboot, reboot a database, NARDS or, uh, or a database, do failovers or things like this. And of course, organization uh, failure injection. And this is where we try to find the uh, key members of the team and remove their laptop and see how the rest of the team behave. So as you can see, there's a lot of different uh, places where failure injection can be done. And on AWS, we can do failure injection using what we call AWS System Manager documents. And these documents, they basically define action that System Manager will perform on instances. So let's take a look at several of those SSM documents uh, that actually we have open sourced. Document can be uh, a JSON or YAML format, and they usually include steps and parameters that you specify. Uh, 
They are organized as follows. So you have the schema description on the top and with the description, you then have the parameters where you can have the, uh, your, uh, enter your own parameters, modify them. And then of course the main step. Here is actually an actual example of an SSM document that will uh, demo demonstrate very soon to do a CPU burnout failure injection. So it leverages a tool called StressNG, which is very popular for doing stresses on systems. While the CPU one was pretty short and straightforward, you can define way more complicated ones if you want. Here's, here's, uh, here are the main steps that queries the IP range of a particular AWS service and inject latency to the IP address related to that service and leaving everything else unchanged. It's really perfect if you want to inject latency, for example, to DynamoDB only or EC2 or things like this. So to get everyone started, we created a bunch of those SSM documents, uh, defining a whole range of different failure injection from CPU burnout, network latency injection, and of course, black holding. So I invite you to look at this Git repository and contribute. Recently, my friend and colleague, Martin Bibi, AKA the Beeps, <laughs> ported many of these failure injection to PowerShell and Windows. So if you are using Windows, you can also do these kind of things. Here is an overview of what's available today. So feel free to suggest some more or even better contribute. After all, that's the whole uh, purpose of having it open sourced. Now let's see how you can run this chaos document with SSM. So this is a high level diagram of FS SSM. As you can see, it integrates with the console, the CLI and the SDKs. Uh, you can define permission using IM and output the logs to CloudWatch or S3. So that very, uh, very convenient. Now I have to say that SSM is an agent-based uh, service for managing servers on any infrastructure, even your hybrid ones. It lets you monitor, view, manage resources, things like this. But more importantly, SSM lets you take action using something called SSM run command. And this is what we are leveraging to do failure injection. It's worth noting that the source code for the SSM agent is also open sourced on GitHub. So you can, uh, you can look at it and modify it for your organization needs. You can do security audit if the process that you have to adhere to requires you to do so. It's installed by default on many of the uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon AMIs dating uh, past 2017. Uh, so I invite you to look at the documentation for a complete list of supported AMIs. For others, you can, of course, install the agent manually and it's pretty straightforward. So while many of those AMIs come with the uh, pre-installed agent, it's not enabled, right? So you really have to uh, give it an IM role uh, to the instance to allow SSM agent to communicate back to uh, system manager. Now let's take a look at a demo so you get a feeling of how things work. So here I'm on my dashboard, EC2 uh, dashboard, and as you can see, I have an EC2 instance uh, with a public DNS. So I will connect to that public, uh, to that instance uh, using SSH. Right? So here I am. Oh. Then uh, we'll uh, launch a tool called HTOP. So HTOP is a tool that monitors resources, whether it's the memory, the CPU, or uh, the different kind of processes, right? So you can see my CPU is really, really low. Then I can go into the console, the system manager console, and on the left, you have something called run command. Once you've uploaded all the document we've put on GitHub, you can filter them by the owner, and then you'll have a CPU stress one here. This is the one we are demoing today. And you have, of course, the common parameters. The default duration is 60 seconds and zero CPU, which means all the default CPU. You can choose your instance manually here. It's the exact same instance that I uh, showed you in the console. You can output the uh, command into an S3 bucket and, of course, CloudWatch. Uh, now, the good thing, you can also enable SSA, uh, SNS notification to send uh, you know, your uh, notifications or email. And you also can have the output of the CLI command at the end. So let's run this experiment. 
And then we can go back to in the instance and you can see the CPU is now running hot. So we're doing now failure injection by exhausting the CPU. You see stress energy is doing it. And of course you can go back to the console and cancel, cancel the command if you wish. And you can see now my CPU is back to normal. So we can do, uh, of course, the same using the CLI. As you can see here, this is the command to do the C, uh, CLI uh, failure injection with the CPU burnout. Uh, it gives me a command ID, which I then can also use to cancel the particular command that was done. And using the CLI is, of course, AWS SSN. And then you do the cancel command with the ID that we just got from the previous uh, uh, comment. There we go. My comment is now being cancelled. So the short second small demo here, uh, we're going to do a failure injection which will inject network latency. So for that, let's ping the Twitter uh, website and you'll see my ping is roughly currently 10 milliseconds, which is pretty fast. Um, now let's try to inject 1000 millisecond latency here. So for that, I'm using another document called uh, latency stress here uh, with a delay of 1000 milliseconds for a duration of two minutes. So let's run that. So that's the output. And as you can see now, the ping is actually already starting to increase and we have now 1000 milliseconds of latency on that particular uh, ping. Right. So, that's pretty much uh, all for now. On that bombshell, I want to pass the mic to Varun, who is going to uh, discuss about how Prime Video uh, leverages SSM for their Karos engineering practices. Varun, the mic is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adrian. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, viewing this presentation. I'm Varun. I'm a software engineer working on Prime Video. And I would like to continue this uh, discussion about chaos engineering and using the AWS systems uh, manager. And I would specifically like to talk about how uh, this can be codified, how it can be automated, and also share a case study about how Prime Video used this and what kind of uh, benefits uh, did we get. So first, Let's uh, look at this uh, workflow again, the, the same workflow that Adrian has explained. So let's imagine uh, you have uh, tried this a couple of times. You have uh, run some fault injection uh, tests, some chaos tests using this approach, perhaps uh, through the AWS console or the CLI. And uh, now you want to integrate this with your test suite. Maybe you want to add it to your continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. So how can that be done? Well, first of all, we need to change this uh, workflow and this uh, diagram a little bit. Uh, it will look something like this. So everything on the right hand side, the service under test, it remains the same. On the left hand side is where you codify this, uh, uh, this approach, this testing strategy. Uh, generally in some kind of a test package, so your services test suite or maybe a load generator package. And you will need to implement and understand the systems manager create document API, the systems manager send command API, and you will also need to implement and maintain a repository of failure injections uh, in the form of SSM documents. So this is a bit of heavy lifting and complexity that will be uh, recreated and re-implemented by anyone who wants to use this uh, approach for testing. So to simplify this, we have abstracted uh, all these details into a library known as the AWS SSM Chaos Runner library. So if you were to use that library, uh, this uh, picture looks something like this. So instead of uh, figuring out all the systems manager API details, uh, you would integrate with this library and use the 
uh, underlying objects and methods and uh, this would simplify your failure injection testing. Uh, to further prove that point, we can look at how uh, this code actually looks like. So here is some uh, Kotlin code uh, for, for one of these failure injection tests. And I'd like to draw your attention to these two highlighted statements here. Uh, the first statement is uh, where you would call this method provided by the library on this object and execute your failure injection and then the second statement which happens in the after block of your test is where you terminate uh, this failure injection and just before this first highlighter statement is where you set up the failure injection and initialize the systems manager client and in between the before and the after block is where you would uh, validate your failure uh, mitigation, assert something in your test. So maybe you want to check whether auto scaling is working. Maybe you want to check your alarms. So all that happens between uh, these two before and after blocks. Again, to stress uh, what we have just seen, we have gone from this level of detail and complexity to just a few lines of code. Apart from this, uh, the library also contains a repository of tried and tested uh, failure injections. You will find most of the commonly used failure injections already implemented in the library. Also, as uh, Adrian mentioned, this uh, library and this approach has been uh, tested extensively on Amazon EC2 and on ECS using the EC2 launch type. And uh, this library is uh, open sourced, so you can come and chat to us if you have any issues and you will keep on receiving uh, improvements and bug fixes and such uh, made by the community. So you can go to the following uh, GitHub link and uh, find more about the library. Next up, I want to talk about how Prime Video has used this approach and this uh, library to prevent a potentially customer impacting event, uh, an outage scenario. First, uh, let's look at the system uh, which was uh, under test. This is one of the many uh, internal Prime Video services. Uh, this service in particular was running on EC2 and it had a dependency on Elastic Cache. And this call path from the service to Elastic Cache contains a timeout uh, configuration. And in this particular uh, chaos experiment, we were interested in validating this uh, timeout configuration. So what does that mean? Uh, what we wanted to see was whether if uh, Elastic Cache was slower to respond than the value specified in the timeout, uh, whether the timeout was actually working and whether the service was uh, responding in a default pre-configured manner or if that timeout was not working. So how can this uh, kind of a test be done? Uh, this kind of a test is generally quite uh, difficult to implement in unit testing or integration and end-to-end -end testing. And that's why we decided to explore this kind of fault injection driven testing um, and chaos experimentation. So what did we do? Uh, we integrated with the Chaos Runner library from the services uh, load generator package. And in particular, we were interested in something known as a dependency uh, latency injection failure. Uh, this kind of a failure adds a pre-configured amount of uh, latency to all the calls to a given dependency uh, from the service and once this kind of a failure injection is configured and the start method is called this triggers the AWS systems manager which runs the failure injection on the underlying fleet and this leads to an increased uh, latency on the particular dependency so in this case the dependency is 
elastic cache and the amount of latency added uh, by this failure injection was around one second and uh, the timeout which was configured uh, in this config was 40 milliseconds. So we are running this test and uh, in the ideal scenario, we are not expecting uh, any impact to be seen on the services dashboard or metrics because we are expecting the slow elastic cache calls to just time out and there to be a default uh, response from the service. But while running this test, this is not what actually happened. Uh, what actually happened can be seen in this uh, graph here. This graph is representing the elastic cache latency on the left hand y axis. On the right hand y axis is the service call volume and the blue line represents the elastic cache latency, the maximum value of it. So as you can see, the elastic cache latency is way above the timeout of 40 milliseconds. Uh, this means that the timeout is not working. So we stopped uh, this test. We went back to the code. We found a bug in the timeout configuration. We fixed that bug. We redeployed uh, this code and then we reran the same test again. Now the second time we saw a graph uh, like this and the blue line again representing the elastic cache latency this time is uh, maxing out at the timeout value of 40 milliseconds which means that the timeout is now working. So by doing a very simple uh, test we were able to catch a bug in a common code path uh, your cache is slowing down and you're expecting the timeout to work in a certain way. If this does not work, it would be a slowdown for the customer and maybe even a failed request. So this prevents this kind of a failure uh, scenario with a simple test. Now to further uh, stress uh, my point about how easy it is to do this kind of a test, uh, I would like to show you a demo. Uh, running a failure injection directly from my coding environment from my IDE. So on the left hand side is the Amazon EC2 console. I have an EC2 instance here. Uh, observe the name of the instance is the same on the right and the left hand side. On the right hand side is my Java IDE and uh, I will be running a CPU hog uh, failure attack on this particular host. So to observe that I am SSH into this particular host and I'll run the htop uh, command which will show us the CPU. So the CPU consumption is almost uh, zero right now. And this block of code that you see here, I'll just start uh, executing it. The first statement is initializing the AWS systems manager client. The second uh, line of code here is setting up the failure injection by using a function provided by the chaos runner library. We specify the name of the failure injection, uh, the name of the target, i.e. which host will uh, receive this failure. And then we specify some parameters for uh, the failure. So for this particular failure injection, we specify how much load should be consumed on the underlying uh, instance, how much CPU should be consumed. Uh, in the next statement, we actually start the execution of uh, this failure. Uh, and now you can see that uh, the effect of this failure is uh, now seen on the host. It's uh, received this uh, failure injection script, the stress ng based CPU consumption and CPU is being consumed as, uh, as configured in this block of code. Now, while this uh, failure injection is running, uh, you would assert something in this test something block. It's not been specified here for, for this demo. Uh, for this particular case, you could check if auto scaling was working, if your alarms uh, are functioning as expected. Uh, after you have done that, you can then uh, stop the failure injection uh, with this method here. Now, all the code uh, and the demos uh, that we have seen in this presentation, both Adrian and mine, uh, are all open source available on GitHub. So we invite you to join uh, 
to go and check out those uh, repositories, uh, try those demos, and uh, let us know if you have any issues. We are glad to help you with, uh, with any bugs you find. And we also welcome any uh, pull requests you have for improvements uh, or bug fixes and such. So please go and check out those uh, repositories. Uh, a more detailed uh, view of uh, this particular talk can be found um, in an article uh, Adrian and me wrote for the AWS open source blog. Uh, it has all these uh, uh, demos and details explained uh, uh, with a lot more depth. So please uh, check that out at this link. Uh, that's it from me and Adrian today. Thanks a lot. And please don't forget to complete the session survey. Thanks.